this is a meteorite. I think it's pretty confirmed. That is pretty freaking awesome. Today, I'm gonna find a meteorite here on this roof. They're falling all around us constantly, as much as one per square meter per year. But most of them are really small, like microscopic small. So we gotta know where to look. Now, they fall pretty much everywhere evenly, but roofs are a really good place to look because there's not very much man-made stuff up here that could be confused for a meteorite when we're sifting through everything. The good news is that most meteorites have either iron or nickel in them, which makes them magnetic. So we can just take a magnet and go through it and only look at what sticks to the magnet, which really narrows down what we have to sift through. All right, I've only got a little bit so far, but I think I'm gonna stop because it's really windy right now and it's blowing all the dust around and I don't wanna lose any, any precious samples here that might be the few micrometeorites that have fallen on this roof. So I'm gonna wait till tomorrow morning when it's nice and calm, I'll sweep the rest of the roof and then we'll take it inside and uh, start to filter it. Well, I don't know if you can tell, but the sweeping is totally not working. Yeah, the wind's just picked up too much already. I didn't get out here till a little bit later than I hoped. I've got two small samples. This one I took with the magnet, just a tiny bit. And then this one is just what I swept up uh, out of one of the drains. And so I'm gonna take both of those back in the shop. I figured uh, I'd take one without the magnet because I kept getting more and more with the magnet and everything's, whoa, you can tell. Started, just started getting really windy. So anyway, I'm gonna take this back in the shop and try and work with it. And uh, if I don't find anything, I'll come up here tomorrow when it's uh, really, really calm and sweet uh, before there's any wind. Let's head back inside. First, we need to wash everything. Uh, partly just to make sure it's not sticking together and partly to get rid of the really fine dust. and some dishwasher soap. I was told this was good soap to use for this purpose. All right. That looks pretty nice. Mmm. Okay, we're gonna use this ultrasonic cater, which uses high frequency sound waves to shake everything. And it really helps with cleaning, sort of speeds up the cleaning process. Just got water and a little bit of dish soap in here as uh, in the in the ultrasonicator, and then put the beaker in there, and it's heating up. It's at 30 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna have it go up to 50, and uh, and I'll run that for a bit here. Let's see. That'll run that for about four minutes. All right, I'll let that run. I'll come back in a minute. All right, I poured off the water and let it dry, and now it's time to get rid of even more things that are probably not meteorites. So I have a set of sieves here, and uh, they're graduated sizes. So this is 1.4 millimeters. It only lets things smaller than 1.4 millimeters through. This one is 0.4 millimeters, and then I've got 0.2 millimeters here. So I'm going to pour this. I'm just gonna stack these together, and I'm gonna pour it through here, and then we'll separate out the parts that probably are meteorites and the parts that probably aren't. Okay. So, now in this one, we have like veritable rocks and things. Those are almost undoubtedly not meteorites. Same with this set. So these are bigger than 0.4 millimeters and these are too big, okay? It is the size that's between 0.2 and 0.4 millimeters that we're looking for. This is where all our meteorites should be if, if we find any. All right, let's go through it with the magnet one more time, just in case I have picked up anything that is not magnetic in here, which I think there's a fair amount. All right, that is what little is left. Woo, don't wanna dump any. Oh no, dumped a little bit. Hopefully the meteorite wasn't in there. Uh, let's take this over to the microscope and have a, a look close up, see what we can see. All right. So, 
we're looking for something relatively round and smooth. And they shouldn't really be worn or cracked or anything. They haven't really had a lot of wear and tear since they landed on the roof, or they shouldn't have. So uh, that's another sign. And then also, they should be relatively rare. So if we see something a lot in the sample, it's probably not a micrometeorite. There aren't that many that should have fallen on this roof. So there's a lot of magnetite in here, which is magnetic material, and it looks like it has held it has been magnetized by the magnet, so it's all clumping together. So there's stuff in here that's way smaller than the screens, but it was all clumped together, so it came through as a clump. That's annoying. I ended up not finding anything that looked super promising in this batch, so I went back up to the roof and I swept the whole thing, and I ended up just bringing it all down in a bucket, regardless of whether it was magnetic or not. It took me a better part of a day to clean it all up and sift through it, and then I spent several hours looking at it under the microscope until this happened. Ooh, ooh, I think I found one. Okay, I think this is actually, I've seen a lot of things that I thought might be it, but this one I'm pretty sure. Okay, see that dark thing in the middle? Kind of carve out a little more space around it. There's a couple key features here that makes me really think this is a meteorite, so. So on this side here, it's got a little bead sticking off the side. And I think that's a little bead of like nickel, either nickel or maybe iron. And then the striations down its body going this way, those striations are really pretty characteristic of a micrometeorite. I've been using these books um, from John Larson, who's kind of pioneered looking for uh, micrometeorites, and I've been using these as my reference. So I wanna see if I can find some that look, he's got all these great photos in here. I'm gonna see if I can find a comparable one to show you. It's kind of like this one. I think that's the bead that's showing up there. And then you see all this, these striations here. That's looking very similar to what I have got. So John really pioneered the whole idea of looking for micrometeorites in urban environments. Before that, we'd really only found them in like super out of the way places like Antarctica where there's no chance of, of human contamination. But he figured out that you go up on roofs and use magnets and all the stuff I've been doing. But we'd actually go one step further in verifying that this is actually a micrometeorite because I'm totally not sure. And I'm just looking at it and comparing it with John's pictures. We can use a scanning electron microscope with X-ray spectroscopy, which will tell us what elements something is made out of. And meteorites have a very specific chemical composition that doesn't naturally occur here on Earth. So I happen to have <laughs> the SEM on loan still. So I wanna put this in there, do some X-ray spectroscopy, and we'll know for certain. So let me get this sample pulled out of here, prepared to go in the SEM, and we'll have a look. Okay, the moment of truth. I gotta mount this on this little sample post here that's covered with carbon conductive sticky tape without losing it. <laughs> and I'm really worried about that. All right, there is my mounted sample. I'm gonna load it up here in the SEM. Right. All right, let's close this up and we'll pump back down to volume and then I'll be back and we'll have a look. Okay, we're down to vacuum now, let's take a look. Hit explore here. I don't know where we are, we gotta find the sample first. That looks like a hole. So, I think I put it in the bottom one, didn't I? Okay, so let's put it in here. Wait, 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 hang on. Okay, I think this is the stripe down the middle. And there are some samples, excellent, okay. So, the big kahuna, the one that we think is a meteorite should be that one, all by itself. Let's get rid of this and do a spot analysis right on the bead. It's not oxygen. No, nickel, nickel and iron. 
I think this is a micrometeorite. I'll call it now. So micrometeorites are chondritic, which means they have a specific chemical composition made up of oxygen, magnesium, and silicon with traces of aluminum, calcium, and iron. So that looks like carbon, which would we would expect. Oxygen, yes. Uh, this one is magnesium. Another manual peak. So we've got a little peak in here that's aluminum. This little ball here should be nickel and iron. Okay. That's looking like iron and nickel. I think this is a meteorite. I think it's pretty confirmed. That is pretty freaking awesome. Ooh, this might be one too. <laughs> did we find multiple? I think we did, holy cow. So we have found two micrometeorites right here on the roof of the gymnasium here on Picaris Pueblo. That's pretty incredible. I'll be honest. I wasn't sure I was gonna find one. I mean, <laughs> who goes up on the roof and just finds a meteorite? But it's totally doable. And you don't need all of the fancy equipment I have or, you know, access to such a big roof. People are finding meteorites on their home roofs in their gutters with little more than a magnet and a, a kitchen sieve and a cheap USB microscope. And you don't need the SEM. You know, the SEM is good for getting definitive proof that it's a, a meteorite, but uh, you can get most of the way there just by looking at it and comparing it against reference photos. So if you'd like to give this a try yourself, I'd recommend picking up uh, John Larson's book, On the Trail of Stardust, which goes through all of the techniques that I've used in this video and the equipment that he recommends and whatnot. He's got a bunch of reference photos to show you what you're looking for. If you end up trying this and you end up finding one, tweet a photo at me or, or come join the Strange Parts Discord and post it on there. I'd love to see it. But for now, that's about it. I'm Scotty from Strange Parts, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.